Well, good afternoon, everyone. We have with us today uh, Mayor Chris Reinersman from the great city of Independence, the heart of Kenton County, I think is the tagline. Right. Uh, Mayor, thanks for getting with us today. And uh, you've got a very a growing, dynamic city and a lot of things on your plate every day. So thanks for the time. And, and I, I noticed you're a little dressed down today. And uh, maybe you want to <laughs> share, with, uh, share with the community, what, what, what world have you got on your shirt? Well, Judge, I appreciate being here, and you're right. Normally, when I come to see you in formal settings, I believe one fiscal court meeting, I uh, I commented uh, uh, that I was uh, uh, something to the effect of country mouse in the big city when I when you commented on my bow tie. But yeah, right now I have my Love Independence T-shirt. Uh, this was a spectacular idea. Uh, originated with one of our local business owners. Uh, he reached out to a lot of the other businesses. Uh, worked with a uh, partner with uh, Cincy Shirts, and for every twenty-five dollar T-shirt sale, ten dollars goes back to that business. So uh, I'm wearing Anytime Fitness today, but I've got quite a collection now, and uh, looking forward to adding to that. So I would encourage everybody to go to our Facebook page and order their own Love Independence shirt while supplies last. It's a great idea. Great yeah. idea. Well, and you've got a lot of things going on. You've got uh, to, to deal with. Uh, all the groups, you've got businesses who are probably some succeeding, some struggling, and you've got residents who are worried, uh, who in some cases who are not worried. But So uh, tell us a little bit, what's going on with your residents? Yeah, well, as you well know, right, there's some, some challenges there. I, I will tell you, our residents have been great. Uh, we finished our, our virtual council meeting Monday night, and that was really the, you know, my, my comments were basically focused on thank you to our residents. Uh, we've, we've not had any major problems. People have been paying attention, but more than that, they, they've been reaching out to each other. Uh, I, I did a series of videos to kind of let people know what was going on at the beginning. And, and every one of them, I ended very sincerely with, you know, let's, let's keep doing what independence does well and let's take care of each other. Uh, they tend to be good neighbors, but so many, so many, so many great examples of it. You know, we reached out right away. We, uh, we've got an independence volunteer corps. We decided uh, a council member friends and came up with an idea to reach out to seniors and, and other high risk people, see if we can get put together our volunteers to shop for them. Uh, so right away, we got a ton of volunteers that wanted to do that. Uh, we reached out to our, uh, first through our senior center, had our senior center director contact all of our members and uh, didn't have any takers, which surprised us. So uh, we went, put it on social media and uh, didn't have a lot of takers. And what I learned, I was shocked at first, but what I learned is a lot of between their family and their neighbors, people were already helping people out great. and there just wasn't a great need. So, you know, what a, what a, what a great thing not to be used because it's not needed. Great way of looking um, at it. We've got a couple churches here in town that have food pantries. They've been doing a spectacular job. Uh, Independence Christian Church, both of these have had food pantries running for a long time. Independence Christian Church has an emergency pantry. They've reached out to us, said, you know, can you promote us? To let people know we're here. We're here to help. Generations uh, over in the Beach Grove area, has, uh, they've got a larger pantry. They were running once a month. They partner with Free Store Food Bank periodically. And they've, I know a couple Saturdays ago, I was over there. They had over 900 boxes. Uh, to give out, uh, wow. did a great yep. job. Yeah, so they've they, they've been stepping up for it, um, and you know I've seen it. You know um, I've been invited to be part of several of the you know neighborhood subdivision Facebook pages, uh, and and I've I've seen that through this entire crisis so, of people just putting posts out there. Hey neighbors, I'm going to Kroger. Does anybody need anything? That's uh, great stuff like that. So very cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, in, a, in addition to supporting the businesses with the T-shirt, and I've only got one, but I, I guess I've got to go back and order some more. Um, the business side, uh, are, what's the what's the tone you're seeing from the business community and uh, how they're coming together with this uh, with this pandemic? Well, it's exactly as you said. There are, there are some that are really struggling, and you know some 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 that are that are doing well. Unfortunately, the the former is is, is probably more in the majority. Uh, restaurants, particularly, um, ha have been hit hard. Uh, those you know the sit down restaurants, those that weren't really specializing in carry out delivery. Um, so yeah, they've they've been hit hard. We've really tried to promote them. Um, Matter of fact, we started right away. Uh, I asked one of one of our staff to reach out to every restaurant in town, find out what if they were open, what their hours were, how they were handling, you know, were, were they curbside, what, what were they doing to address safe food handling, uh, and then we put together a list and we started posting that twice a day on on Facebook, reminding people to to support a local restaurant. I know I've seen you doing some of that. I've done some videos. I know you have. Uh, yeah, it's I, I you know I, I was in the restaurant business. I, I worked restaurants in high school and college, and actually had a pizza place when I was young for a few years. Um, that's to have your legs cut out from under you like that is, is, is scary. And, and then unfortunately, you know, you talk to some of the hair salons, we've got a few gyms here in town. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to imagine. So Those are tough businesses even by themselves without this going on. You're exactly right. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And yeah, the margins are thin and then they have to deal with something like this, but been in contact with them. They've been in contact with each other. We've got a great uh, independence business association that, uh, 
uh, you know, they were supporting each other. They, they were doing a, a, a weekly informal coffee get together prior to this. Uh, so they turn, change that to a virtual meeting now. Uh, they call it the Eagle's Nest. And uh, I've made a point of trying to get to those on as many Wednesday mornings as I can, just to, just to be able to talk. Uh, talk great. to everybody, answer questions, and when I can't, uh, Chris Marconi, our city administrator, will make it. So, yeah. It just, well, and is, are there any things you think the community needs to know about the businesses that we didn't know already, and we we, we need to be doing the willing to do the carry out, uh, supporting that in a safe manner, and all those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, buying the T-shirts helps businesses. Uh, I think anything else you can think of that. That's it. You know, something I've asked, and and and. God loves some of our businesses. They're not, they're not necessarily accepting it in places like gyms, hair salons, things like that. Buy gift certificates. Um, you know, they, that, that, that cash flow can help them right now. And when they're back on their feet, you know, use that certificate in a few months when they're back open and running and it's not so critical. Yeah. Um, you know, maintain memberships to gyms, things like that. Um, it, it's all going to make a difference you know, for those of us who are fortunate enough to still be working. Uh, and I can tell you, you know, I'm lucky. I, I am. My wife is. So, so we've, we've, we've got that going, but uh, I found, frankly, I'm not spending near as much money because when you don't have the options right. to go out so much, uh, some of you take a little extra money and, and then start stockpiling some gift certificates to some of these places. Um, Great idea. Yeah, whatever we can do to support them. We, we, if not for them, for yourself, we want them here when we get back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's part of the, the vitality and the energy of any community. And plus the fact that they're mostly all entrepreneurs who are trying to provide their families. So but one thing on the serious note of this pandemic is this whole issue of COVID-19 and uh, the community, uh, we needed to add to ramp up testing, uh, and as the community knows. And I wanted to tell you, uh, you know, when I was aware that uh, the Northern Kentucky was going to have our first testing site, um, and the governor and his team had chosen and looked at it as an option for independence, uh, you know, I've got to tell you, your police chief, fire chief were Johnny on the spot and your team were to uh, jump on. So, uh, you know, kudos to to the the team that's there supporting the community and in independence. All right, Judge, thank you. Um, and uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. We were we were happy to be here. The chief, of course, was uh, Chief Lucas. Our police chief was was in the heart of it, as was Chief Breeze uh, with the Independence Fire District. Um, he came to me and said, "Look, this is what they want to do. Are we okay with this?" I said, hey, absolutely. Whatever we can do, we know testing is important." Um, so yeah, happy to help it. And I, you know, that, that was, that was the last they had to come to me for. They, they, they right away were just working on a plan, working with Steve Hensley, who's doing a great job on the, on the emergency management side. I had a lot of our officers at the site. Um, yeah. And it goes to the larger picture. And I mean, you just talked to Chief Lucas and, uh, and Chief Breeze recently uh, on one of these calls and we're very fortunate here in Independence. Uh, you know, we've got spectacular leadership and then it just, it goes right down the line. Um, uh, and, and in a time like this, when, when you need emergency responders, more than first responders are more important than ever. We've, we've, right. we've realized we have nothing to worry about. So yeah, no, I appreciate you, you bringing that up. Um, well, we take it for granted sometimes. I think I said this to them, but uh, we, we assume that cooperation is a, is a given and they're immediately, they're saying, yes, let's, and if we, they know there are going to be hurdles, but they were, they know they're going to work through them. That just speaks to their character and their skill set, their training. And, uh, uh, and of course the, the mood that is set in the city. So I think that's, can't go without really being so grateful for it. You know, you're right. And, and I think what a lot of us don't think about is you're right. That expectation is there. Uh, and maybe what we don't consider is in addition to that, you know, we know the stress we're all going through just for fear of this disease for our own health, for the health of our families, particularly. Um, and, and I don't know that we're thinking about in their minds. Can you imagine what that stress level much be? I was talking to one of our sergeants a couple of weeks ago and I, I just, I, I don't know if it was a conversation about masks or exactly what it was. And he very nonchalantly said, oh, well, I, I just assume I'm going to get this. I'm like, what do you mean, Sergeant? He said, he said, well, I, it's just, I'm, I'm not complaining. He said, it's just with what I do, you know, you, you, we're, we're trying to social distance, but, you know, some contacts you can't avoid. I'm just, it's going to happen. And, and about a week later, some, I overheard another police officer saying basically the same thing. So, you know, they're, they don't care. They're going to do the job that we ask them to do, as they always do, uh, even in these difficult times. Well, what uh, what are the things that give you uh, uh, a sense of uh, what are th what are you things you're looking for in terms of as we come out of this uh, that maybe others aren't seeing because they're not mayors of a, a key city in the, in the community? What 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 would you like to pass on to the, to the residents of Kenton County? Well, what I'm looking forward to, of course, is getting back together again. But uh, how, how we act going forward? Um, yeah, obviously we're going to have to be more cognizant of things like this, and you know, that hopefully will be a silver lining. Uh, but hopefully we'll still be able to get together. I, uh, 
I joke we did a uh, we do a, a periodic independence newsletter, but yeah, I, I do a uh, I do a column in that, and uh, and I this one I refer to as my liars column. It uh, it came out about uh, two weeks before all of this, but I had written it about uh, five weeks before. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I take it back. It came out pretty much right as this as all of this was coming down, and there was uh, the theme of it was I can't wait to see everybody at our parties at the park. Oh wow! Uh, at our Easter egg hunt. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great in independence. We're all neighbors and we get to get together for these things. And yeah, I was, of course, none of it was true. <laughs> but, so I look forward to seeing everybody again. Um, and, and, you know, working together to address all of these things and maybe appreciating more what we, what we have. And, you know, I'll, I'll throw those restaurants up there once again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, appreciate the constant cooperation you and your team has and, and the great ideas that you come uh, up with in terms of bringing the ideas up and, I think you spoke about uh, the other day about talking with other cities around the state. And sometimes we also don't know, we take it for granted of how much we do work together and share ideas. So I think that speaks to the kind of things you're trying to, to do there in the community. Well, and I agree, Judge, and, and I, I, I have to give kudos to you. Uh, um, I, through this entire process, and I'm not sure the residents of Kenton County or the residents of Independence are aware how much we all work together. You've certainly facilitated a lot of that. We've got our right. weekly calls, of course. Uh, where we bring together St. E's and, and the health department and emergency management and, and all the mayors and, and right, we kick around ideas and bring us up to date on various things. And uh, yeah, there, you know, there, there have absolutely been a variety of those things. Uh, Northern Kentucky summit meeting. We were, we were both on uh, a week or so ago. Um, yeah. It's that, that's all been very helpful. I, I had a call with Kentucky league of cities right before this. Uh, and they were kind of going through the, what are you doing? What do you need to be thinking about kind of recovery plan? And it was a no surprising the number of things I could already check off that they asked, and it was because we all work together on these things. So, yeah, thank you for that. You bet. Well, just I'm, I'm a piece of the puzzle, but uh, together we, we can't get it done. We, we can get anything done if we work together. So appreciate your, your time today. Wish you the best of luck for your residents and businesses as they are all, we're all in this together. So thanks so much, Mayor. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Thank you.